Hi guys, my name is Trinity, and if you are here, you must be here to talk about books. Today, I am here to do my September wrap-up. Yes, it is a little late. I have had a chaotic few weeks, and oh, has it affected every aspect of my life, including my reading and my recording of YouTube videos. So, we're just gonna go ahead and get into what I read in September. I had two DNFs, which made the eight books <laughs> that I read in September actually six completed books, which is insanely low for me. Insanely low. Yes, I am still working on SPSSC 2, so I'm not counting those books in that number. However, like I said, life has been chaotic, so really my reading has gone down quite a bit. And then I started a book in September, but because of the timing of the events in my life that have had huge impact on the last few weeks, I still have not finished that book, and it's two weeks into October. <laughs> So of the six books that I read in September, five of them were fantasy and one was sci-fi. Woo, yeah, my allergies just went a little nutty. <laughs> as far as pages read, 3,278, which puts me at my lowest amount of pages for the year. Correction, February was the lowest. This has been the lowest it has been in the latter half of the year. And as you guys know, we go in reading order because if we don't, I might skip a book. I have been known to do it in the past. <laughs> and then you guys all ask me about, what about this book? You know, later on on Twitter or Discord. And I'm like, oh, well, forgot about that one, didn't I? <laughs> so the first book that I read in September would be The Sinister Mystery of the Mesmerizing Girl by Theodore Goss. This is the third book in the Athena Club series by Theodore Goss. And this follows the daughters of really famous Gothic figures, Gothic literary figures. And we have Rappuccini, we have uh, Jekyll and Hyde, we have Sherlock makes an appearance in these books. We have Dr. Moreau, like there's just a whole lot of gothic literary figures that show up in these books, not themselves, their daughters. And these girls are an absolute joy to follow. Catherine is one of my favorite <laughs> characters in any story I've read. She is such a great character. And all of these girls are really clever. They are all very much into discovering what made their parents these notorious figures in history. And it's just really, really fun. <clears throat> however, however, I gave this book three stars. While I really, really enjoyed being with these characters again, I didn't like the story of this one and the plot kind of fell off in a few places and you know plot's very important to me and so while I found myself really enjoying my time with these characters again I did not like the way this series wrapped up I thought it was very lackluster I'd heard that Theodora Goss was considering a fourth book I actually think that might help the series as a whole because this one it almost felt like a middle book syndrome kind of book but it's the final book. And so I don't know, I had a lot of issues with it. Even though I really enjoyed my time back with these girls, this is going to come in at a three star, kind of knocking this series out of my favorite YA series. So I really do hope that Theodore Goss does come back to the world, does come back to these characters and kind of redeems this book. Next, I picked up a novella by Marie Brennan called Driftwood. Oh my goodness. I really, really enjoyed this. This is another odd little duck that I have found that just feeds my own little odd duck mentality. <laughs> but this story is about a guy named Last who kind of is the protector of this world where the worlds, like, they converge here. They die here in this place of driftwood. And it is a very, very slow process for these converging worlds to just fall off and die. But Last is a character who lasts through all of these different types of world breakdown scenarios. And he kind of helps people along the way, kills people along the way. So many don't know what to think about him. So many worship him. Some think, like I said, he's a god. Some think he's a protector. Some think he's a mercenary. But no one really knows for sure. They just know that Last has standed the test of time in this world. And this whole book is first-hand encounters of people who have met with Last, who have been helped by Last, 
and kind of them just trying to figure out what is actually going on and why all of these worlds are collapsing and what's their place in these dying worlds. How are they supposed to move on whenever their world dies? Do they get to move on when their world dies? It's really, really cool. And it opens up a lot of questions and, you know, the responses are very thought provoking. I enjoyed this. Now, I did pick this up hoping I would enjoy Marie Brennan's writing style and I could possibly invest in the Lady Trent series. I probably will. I am, I'm still writing the fence a little bit until I can find cheaper versions of the books. Like I said, they never go down in price around here. And so I have a hard time getting my hands on them. I do want them in hardback because those hardbacks are absolutely insanely gorgeous. So I might try and see if I can find them on like a books or something like that, but then I don't want them destroyed either. So we'll see, we'll see how I proceed with Marie Brennan, but I do think I am going to give her Lady Trent series a try after this. Next is the book that surprised me in so many ways that I had a hard time rating it because there were things that surprised me in bad ways. There were things that surprised me in good ways. And then the whole overall plot of the story surprised me. Like I didn't think this is the direction that we were going. And so this book has a lot going on. And sometimes when books have a lot going on, I have a hard time giving them a rating because I want to pick apart each part and rate the parts individually and then give a rating. <laughs> but you have to rate the book as a whole. However, I did love this book. And this book tore me up emotionally. That would be A Strange and Stubborn Endurance by Foz Meadows. Now, this book's opening scene is traumatic and it deals with sexual assault and it sets the tone for what is to come. And a lot of it is very, very dark. So if you're not in the mood for a dark story, don't let this beautiful cover sway you into thinking that this is going to be a tale of love and enemies to lovers and things like that. Even though that's kind of a trope that exists in this, it's not real. It's not real. Um, but, uh, okay. So we have kind of a wayward son type trope with our main character. Our main character is gay in a country that does not approve of being gay. And when he is caught with his lover, he is sent away to marry the daughter of a semi-rival kingdom. Well, in all of the hubbub of being sent to this rival kingdom to marry the daughter, they find out, well, what happened that kicked off this story. And they're like, oh, he is gay. And maybe we should have him marry our son instead because the rival kingdom they don't care if you're gay, straight, bi, lesbian, whatever. Love is love in that kingdom. And so while the main character thinks that he is going off to marry this girl, he shows up to find out that the actual engagement is to another man. While he should be excited, while he should be thrilled that this is the way things are going for him, or at least a little bit happier, he is severely traumatized by what happened in the opening scene of this book. However, the person he is now set to marry is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And when he is introduced to our main character, he's kind of like, okay, okay, he's hot, you know? <laughs> However, again, he is still so traumatized that we again encounter a traumatic event for our character because he is lost and doesn't know what to do and thinks maybe I should end my own life because I don't want to put this guy through my trauma. So this turns out to be a very beautiful story of acceptance. This turns out to be a very beautiful romance that is presented. Like this is a very healthy relationship, even though our main character is not mentally stable. And then we get another story in the political machinations that are going on with these characters. So we have the sister as another character, obviously, because she was the one who was set to marry our main character. And another sibling who do not know who is going to have rights to the throne of this kingdom. It is not set who the heir will be. There has not been a decision made. And so there's a lot of rivalry between the siblings whenever our main character shows up and we get to see some of that play out. There's a lot of people who don't like that. There's going to be a merger of these two kingdoms. Whenever these two marry, we get a lot of that, but there's a lot to dissect in this book. And I loved it. I loved it. It is very dark. It's a very hard read and it will tear you up emotionally, but I would highly, highly recommend this so long as you go through, check the trigger warnings and make sure it's a book that you can get through 
just know that it has a hopeful tone and it has a happy ending. So, you know, all of the turmoil is there, but you will have your resolution. <laughs> so next, um, I was doing Bookopoly, the book Opalathon, and I had to bow out because I had, like I said, a really chaotic month and I, I just I had to bow out. My brain was just done with trying to overprocess everything, to do everything at once. But I did draw or land on the square where I had to read my lowest rated book. And the lowest rated book on my physical TBR just so happened to be the lowest rated book on any TBR I have, like according to Goodreads, you know, stuff like that. And it was Prague by Arthur Phillips. Now this book, oh my gosh, it was a DNF. It was a hard DNF. Whiny millennials who feel very elitist and are like whiny when they don't get their way. This is like the antithesis of everything I like to read. So when I got to a point where I was like, I cannot stand these people. I cannot stand the way the story is playing out. Like I just got to a point where I was like, I hate this. I absolutely hate this book. And so I can see why it's the lowest rated book on my TBR because man, these people were horrible people and they were whining about Prague being such a great place and they wanted to eventually get to Prague, but they're in Budapest. And it's like, okay, <laughs> but you're already in a great place. So why, why are you concerned about this? Anyway, anyway, I hated that book. Also, as you guys know, I have kind of put the brakes on all of my challenges because again, being overwhelmed with all of the things I was trying to do, I just had to go full stop on a lot of things. One of those things is my 12 by 12 in 12. Now, all of those books that I have on my 12 by 12 in 12, I still plan to read. I am just not going to push myself to be finishing these books by the end of the year anymore. I have purchased them if I didn't own them before. And, but all of that said, I read Crucible of Stars. Now this was one of my really good friends, Kate. She actually recommended this. She was the one who wanted me to read it. And I got about 25% of the way through it, but I was like, I, I don't like this. And it was one of those books that there was nothing really, there was nothing really bad about it, but it wasn't like I was intrigued. It wasn't like I was wrapped up in the story or the characters or anything like that. I was just reading it. And so I was like, I don't know what is happening here, but like, I'm not getting anything from this book. And I reached out to her and I told her, I was like, I just, I don't know. I don't feel anything. Like, I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm just kind of meh about it. And she was like, okay, well then don't read it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay. I'm just not going to read it then. But I can't exactly pinpoint what it was about it. Cause there was nothing about it that I didn't like. I just didn't love anything. And so that's where I landed. I DNF'd it and sorry. <laughs> I know why you guys are here. You guys have been waiting for my thoughts on this book. Next, I read The Martyr by Anthony Ryan. Surprise, surprise, I gave it five stars. So one of the things I absolutely love about Anthony Ryan's writing is he writes a lot. Like he is writing a tale from history. Like you think when you're reading these things, these aren't made up events. They sound very real, very visceral. And like his love of history totally comes through in everything he writes. And I feel like the martyr is the magnum opus of that, <laughs> of his like love of history and how political machinations work and how you can rise to power without even really trying whenever events just fall the way they do. And so it, I loved it. I loved it. I also really love when history and religion come together. I really love whenever religion is presented in a fantasy setting and he tackled that. This is everything I love about Anthony Ryan elevated to probably his best work. Do I like this? Do I like this better than Blood Song? No, I love Valen. I love Valen and you can't top Valen as a character for me. <laughs> However, this can stand side by side with Blood Song, and I would be perfectly happy. <laughs> All right, next I picked up the audio for Stormblood by Jeremy Saul. If I'm being perfectly honest, and here I should be, this is my channel, this is my wrap up, I should be honest with you guys. I don't remember this book. I don't remember it. And I think the reason for this is because I read it at a really bad time. Like I said, chaos has ensued in our house and 
an audio, a solely audio book. I might just pick up the physical and try and immersive read this one. But a solely audio in this land of chaos that I have been living in for a month. I don't think I was paying attention. I remember like little bits and pieces of it, but I can't even tell you what the book is about. I was also reading a lot of my STSFC 2 books, and I think they're just starting to blend together in my head because I can't separate Stormblood from what I've read from the slush pile. So I'm having a hard time picking out which book Stormblood was. So I think I'm going to have to read this again, even though I read it and finished it. And I gave it 3.5 stars. So I was actually really looking forward to picking up the next book. Like, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. <laughs> But I'm going to blame it on the chaos that my life has been over the last month. So again, like I said, I will probably end up rereading this with a physical copy because the solely audio didn't quite work for me. However, I don't remember who the narrator is for Stormblood, but man, that person can read me to sleep. Like I, like, I will allow it. I don't care. I'll just start Stormblood, put my headphones in, and go to bed. <laughs> I loved his voice, but it was so soothing. And that could have been another problem for me. It was so soothing that I could feel myself sort like sort of zoning out. <laughs> like I needed it to be a little bit more excitable. <laughs> Next, I read a book that has been on my TBR for a long time. I've actually convinced multiple people to read it and I hadn't read it yet myself, but that would be Black Feathers. This is The Black Dawn Volume 1 by Joseph DeLacy. This gave me Robert McCammon vibes so hard. I adored this book. I don't know why I would had it on my TBR for so long unread. Um, probably, and I'm going to fully admit this because this is a problem I have. I hate mass market paperbacks. I hate them. I hate them and I don't want them in my hands. <laughs> They're tiny and I, I don't know how to hold them. Um, but yeah, I absolutely adored this. I gave it four stars. I don't think it's quite like a perfect book or an exciting book, but it's so well written and well crafted and the lore is absolutely fantastic. I adored every part of this. Now this is kind of a blend of fantasy and horror. And if you've read Robert McCammon, he is very much in the same vein. But we are dealing with a character known as the Crow Man, and no one really knows his history. There are a few people who can interact with the Crow Man, but you don't know if the Crow Man is God or the devil. And this is a very dystopian society that, you know, they know that the modern times happened. They know about cars, they know about electricity and all of this stuff, but that's not a lifestyle they live anymore. They have broken away from technology and they just don't live like that. And I, there was just so many things about this that were so strange, but so well done that it just kept you intrigued, kept you reading. You had to know what was going to happen next. And I would also kind of equate this to some things I have read by Stephen King. So if you are a fan of Stephen King, I could definitely see you liking Black Feathers. But man, yes, I adored it. And I'm hoping that I can find, these are Angry Robots. So I'm hoping I can find the next volume and pick it up pretty soon. Uh, I don't see these around anymore because I've had this for quite a while, but I'll check Amazon and see if I can find volume two. But if you're a fan of Robert McCammon or Stephen King, I would highly, highly recommend Black Feathers. So the book that I started, <laughs> but have yet to finish is Bonds of Chaos by Zach Argyle. I do have the audio, <laughs> so I am going to go ahead and finish up the audio. I was supposed to be helping Zach get it proofread, and because of the chaos of my life, I failed. <laughs> Luckily, Zach is a very understanding guy, and I've submitted the, the two, the two errors that I have found halfway through the book, <laughs> you know, like, I'm halfway through it, and there's only two errors. Adam Gold is doing a absolutely fantastic job. I love how explosive this third book is. It's going to be a favorite. I, I just, I am so eager to finish it. I did start it in September and I have not finished it yet. But like I said, chaos ensued. Zach's a very understanding guy. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just looking forward to finishing out this series mainly, mainly because I know what's coming from Zach Argyle. And I'm excited to read Threadlight and have it on my favorites shelves. The, the two are already up there, the first two. <clears throat> but I am so eager to see what he writes next because I already know some of the details and I'm already just insanely, like, like I'm already just going nuts in my head over what's coming. All right, that is it for me today. Like, subscribe, do all the fun things, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.